This is The Reality. How do you? Welcome to The Reality. The Reality is a half an hour talk show talking about the reality of life as found in Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only true way to eternal life. If we want to know eternal life, then we need to come to the Father through Jesus Christ. I'll be giving you an email address towards the end of today's program. If anything we speak about today just strikes a chord in your heart, I'd love to hear from you. But today on The Reality, we're going to be speaking to Dr. Bill Price. Bill Price is a neuroscientist and an expert who coaches life coaches. Bill shares how important it is to develop a whole approach to life, that is, body, soul and mind. God created mankind in His image. But the Bible tells us that God is spirit, therefore He made us as spiritual beings. And yet we are more than spirit, we are also body and soul. Well, God is a trinity, and if He created us in His image, He created us as three-part beings. He is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We are body, soul, and spirit. The difference, of course, is God is God, and I am not. Our brains are the physical hardware of our bodies. Yet our brains are so marvelously designed that they house our very being. Bill explains how the brain is simply the hardware while it is the neurology that is the software that makes us unique. Inside the head is a brain, and that's the hardware. And then on top of that is your personality, your ego. We are in-breathed by God twice and connected in union with Him, as Jesus explained in the Gospel of John, this is eternal life, that we might know God the Father, as He knows Him, and that we might be at one with God the Father as He is at one with Him. Today on The Reality, we find out more about neurology and how incredibly God has created us. Well, it's really my pleasure today to speak to Bill Price uh, via Skype. Bill, you're into neuroscience. Uh, It's a very intriguing uh, subject. Tell us, what is neuroscience? Neuroscience is the the description of who we really are. Um, so if I had to give a definition, a neuroscience definition of Genesis chapter 1, I'd say in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth with his words, and then he molded man and woman into a neurological, soulfully alive brilliant, intelligent human biology. Hmm. Hmm. And we we tend to forget that that's exactly what we are. We've been trained by the backdrop of um, both business colleges and psychological models and uh, theological models that we are body, soul, and spirit. Mm-hmm. The body mostly is sinful, and we've just got to crucify it all the time. The soul, we've just got to keep filled up with oil. Mm -hmm. And the spirit, we've just got to somehow try and keep that alive. But um, what we forgot is that we were created holistically and we're not compartmentalized. So the the neuroscience is the science of the, the brain and the mind. The brain does nothing. So the brain doesn't think, the brain doesn't feel, the Mm -hmm. brain doesn't do anything. The brain is the hardware. Mm -hmm. The DOS program is the neurology, the neuroplasticity. It's how the brain or how the mind thinks, feels, acts, responds, creates. Um, So neuroscience is like an umbrella of all the different disciplines Thing, of things neuro, okay. of which we are have been created, and um, contains all the the wonderful and beautiful things that we've never been told and taught. Fantastic, amazing. So, how does neuroscience differ from, say, psychology or psychiatry? If you can imagine, I'm drawing a little stick person mm-hmm. with a head and a throat and shoulders and a body. Inside the head is a brain, and that's the hardware. Okay. So the hardware 
does nothing. The hardware simply houses the DOS program. So the neuro program or the, the neuroplasticity or how the mind works, that's called the DOS program. Okay. And then on top of that is your personality, your socio makeup, your ego, which could be equated to a Word app, an Excel app, a PowerPoint app, etc. So your personality is the, the razzmatazz of who we are. It's the actor on the stage. It once, uh, it was, of course, formed the same way um, as uh, our thoughts. It was formed by our thinking and by our feeling and by our actions over time and then was embedded within this DOS program called the neurology. Um, well, okay. But we are not our personality. We are not our thoughts. We are not our emotions. We are not our actions. We are not our body. So when you say we are not those things, what are we then? <laughs> That's the lovely part of it. <laughs> we are soulfully alive, amazingly connected, inbreathed by God twice, and connected in union with Him and have a capacity and ability to know him as Jesus explained in the gospel of John chapter 17 that this is eternal life that we might know God the Father as he knows him and that we might be at one with God the Father as he is at one with him mm -hmm. so we are a living soulfully alive connected in breathed being Okay, okay. So I'm getting it really that that you're making it very clear that um, the human being, obviously we're different to the rest of the animal kingdom because I believe because we've got a spirit which is created in God's image. But um, you're saying that um, who I am and my character and all those things you describe, personality, is actually finds its origin in the purpose of God, in God's creative purpose in, in me as a, as a, as a specimen of, of uh, animal product on earth. Is this right? Yeah, indeed. So when God molded us in the book of Genesis, he took his time and he molded man from the dust of the earth and took all the minerals and materials of the earth and molded the body and put within the body all the, the neurons. So in our brain, we've got a 100 million neurons, we've got 78 billion neuron connections within our um, within the brain and within the rest of the body. And within the neurons are the energies. So when God, when Jesus said um, to the young advocate, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength, mm. the Hebrew word for strength is the word energies, and we have different forms of energy in our neurology. So we've got atomic energy, we've got magnetic energy, we've got electrical energy, our magnetic energy um, expands beyond us up to about six meters beyond where we are, and it can be measured, it can be photographed. Hmm. Our brain Electronics can be measured with uh, medical instruments. We've got food state energy. So if we don't eat the right foods and don't get enough exercise, sleep, recreation, we mess with that energy within our body. And interestingly enough, one of the energies is from the Hebrew root word uh, called mammon or money. So we are to love God with all of our energy and all of our strength and all of our soulfully aliveness. Mm -hmm which is our spirit, which is, so our spirit is within, as a, neuro, as a neuroscientist, I can say, our spirit is within the neuro aliveness of us. It's within our consciousness. So we have a, that's what makes us different to animals. We are a conscious being. We are conscious about our consciousness and we're aware of our awareness and we can think about what we're thinking. Mm -hmm. Whereas animals are basically just created, they were inbreathed by ruach, it's a Hebrew word for order, systems, 
connectivity intelligence, but not cognitive intelligence. Mm -hmm. When God created the earth, there was chaos all over the place, and then was the breath or the ruach, um, which means systems, order, connectivity, alignment, intelligence. So ruach is the first thing that when I'm coaching people, I I ask the question, so let's let's look at how ruach needs to be formulated in your life. So until you've got basic order, you cannot have all the other amazing things that happen in your life. So we were in breathed by ruach, but mankind was breathed in a second time when God breathed into Adam nefesh chaya, which is the Hebrew word of the very life of God himself, Mm -hmm. of his creativity. And we were created in his image. And the Hebrew word for image means a photographic replica. Uh So if you had to take two pens in your one hand and write a sentence, you'd be writing two sentences at the same time. And that's what it means to be created in the image of God. It's fascinating. Whatever happens with the one happens with the other. Wow, that's incredible. Wow, amazing. Uh, You were using uh, the analogy of computers uh, just a minute ago, talking about the DOS, the operating system of a computer, which is the basic system that makes a computer work, and then adding the software or the programs on top of that, which Mm. uh, I find really interesting, you know, how how computers are very much like like our brains, but obviously far more limited to the brain, the human brain. Talking about neuroplasticity and, uh, and how the Holy Spirit, God created us in His image, breathed into us, created us that that gave us that that energy that you've described, amazing stuff Um, but then the Bible says we've sinned and come short of God's righteous image because of sin Um, and only through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ can we be reconciled to the righteousness of God and find salvation. Bill Price how did you come to know Jesus as your Lord and Saviour? I grew up in a in a nominal um Christian home. My um, father is Welsh. My mother is German. I'm the fruit salad. (laughs) And um, I went to church like everybody else. And then at a youth camp, um, I realized that I needed uh, to respond to God's call or invitation in my life. And I opened up my life and the connection was made or the connection came alive so the the fact that we have neurology within us all of our spirituality has already been built within us there's nothing that you get new from fasting or praying or so in our neurology we already have the fruits of the spirit they're already part of us Um, Eternity is written within our being. We have uh, train up a child in the way in which you will go. It's the Hebrew word kiber, which means the life reason for God. That's already been imprinted in our lives. He's put eternity within our life. So I'm an eternal being right from the word go. Mm -hmm. But when I open up my life and I respond to desiring a relationship with Christ, the aliveness that's inert becomes alive um, within me. And my spirituality switches on, my connection with God automatically, which is there, switches on. And where I was connected to all sorts of other things, I'm now connected to the source of eternal life. Which is, which is God himself through Christ. So the aliveness within me is salvation. Union with God is salvation. Knowing God is salvation. There's, there's no Jesus and anywhere that Jesus mentions in the Gospel of John. It's not Jesus and church or Jesus and reading the Bible or mm-hmm. Jesus and doing mission work. Eternal salvation is very simply just Jesus knowing God the Father through him, being at one with God the Father through him. That's eternal life. Uh, and it was that life that, that I enjoyed, walked into, and started living out 
in amazing ways. And I found my life reason. It evolved from teaching and then moved into pastoral work. I then went through a burnout. Uh-huh. And it was in the burnout that I uh, had a rabbi that was counseling me. And he was the one who suggested that I study neuroscience. And he said, um, so that you can discover things. He said, you'll discover the mysteries of the universe. And the second thing is you'll discover the glory of God. And I must say that in the years that I've had the privilege of studying the world of neurology and studying the world of neuroplasticity, it makes sense. It absolutely just makes sense to me that 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 God has put so much within us, inbreathed into us that that I un- I understand now that a brain goes to church, and if we don't, if preachers don't understand that then they, they're missing the whole point. So if they understand that loud music and music with a high treble irritates the brain waves, you the brain switches off listening and mm. retention within 11 seconds after being irritated by loud music. Mm. Mm. So um, ministers still need to learn that. And... Um, they carry on. I don't know who ever taught us that 45 minutes is the average sermon. I don't know who came up with that diabolical <laughs> thought. Every 19 minutes, we need to stop, take a deep breath and breathe for two minutes of silence so that the subconscious mind can do the filing. If we don't give our brain those two minutes of silence, whether it's in the middle of a message, in the middle of a whatever a meeting or whatever, our brain says, okay, fine, if you want to disrespect me, I will then switch off retention and concentration for mm-hmm. the next 13 to 17 minutes. You're listening to The Reality, produced by Sure Reality, a listener-supported radio ministry. We depend on the generous gifts of our listener to produce this program. You can help reach millions of folks with the sure reality of the message of Jesus by becoming a Sure Reality Vision Partner. To partner with us, please visit the website surereality.net and click on Become a Vision Partner. You're listening to The Reality with me, Dudley Anderson. So good to have your company. If you've tuned in perhaps for the first time, well, thank you so much for joining us. Perhaps you're listening to us online. This program is also podcast at surereality.net. Well, if you've joined us, I'd love to hear from you. Do drop me a note, Dudley at surereality.net. If we've said anything so far in today's program that has just uh, raised a question in your heart or you'd like to make some comments or you maybe would like some prayer, I would love to hear from you. Email me, Dudley at surereality.net. Well, today on The Reality, we're speaking to Dr. Bill Price, a neuroscientist. Bill has explained how we are created as three-part beings, body, soul, and spirit. God breathed his life into us. And the difference between us and the rest of the animal kingdom is that we have a consciousness. We are conscious not only of God, but we are conscious of ourselves and our environment. And God has created you as a conscious being with a personality, with a character. But he's also created you with a spirit. The Bible says that we've all come short of the glory of God, of his righteous spirit within us, because of this stuff called sin in our lives. Therefore, we need to become new creations by acknowledging Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and seeking God's renewal in our spirits, in our spirit beings. Jesus called it being born again. Well, Bill has explained how he was born again, came to know Jesus Christ as a youngster at a youth camp. He now serves God by coaching people to help them understand how the brain works. He says, our brains are like computers. A computer is run by its operating system, or DOS. And then the computer has programs, or apps, applications on its system that we use to perform our daily tasks. The DOS is what Bill Price explains is like the neurology, the basic format that runs our brains. And the programs are our activities, our interests, our hobbies, and our functions in life. Consciousness, he says, is like the DOS of our brains. Well, let's continue talking to Dr. Bill Price today on The Reality to find out more. There's so so much amazingness within the whole world of 
our consciousness of of where we are you you cannot you cannot even have an outer body experience so when paul went to the third heaven how on earth did he know when he got back that he went there so your brain is the hardware but your consciousness is the dos program so your consciousness is beyond your body it's beyond who you are so you can you can move into the realm of eternity in in the form of a trance or in the form of uh, a visitation into another zone as paul did when he went into heaven um and come back and recall it as if you're you were there all the time mm-hmm. so yeah it's just this amazing amazing thing and I, I made big shifts in my life as a Christian. I, I shifted away from the normal Pentecostal Christianity and charismatic Christianity and Reformed Christianity. And what matters most to me now is being at one with God and being at one with Christ and knowing God and knowing Christ and living out in this aliveness in the center of my being. So the... The Hebrew philosopher Martin Bubler wrote, in us is a space where Paul wrote about it, your inner man, your inner spirit. The psalmist wrote about it under the shadow of his wings. Mm -hmm. God is not an eagle. He's not a bird. The Hebrew reality of it all, it was the the talit, um, the prayer shawl. So you are hidden under the very prayer shawl of God. But um, that was part of my discovery, was the whole reality of, and I'm glad the, the rabbi introduced me to it because he introduced me to the Jewishness of Jesus. So I'm not Messianic in any way, but I, I just appreciate the Jewishness of Christ and what, what made him so special in being who he was, the rituals that he had, mm. uh, habits that he formed, the songs that he sang, prayers that he prayed, the way that he prayed was was all part and parcel that I'm afraid the Christian church is missing because they're trying to preach a Western Christ who's blonde-haired and white, and they, they're missing the point. They, mm-hmm. they, they, they're really missing the point. And yeah. um, so I'm just – living out my aliveness in God, enjoying it thoroughly. I'm fellowshipping with people who are in union with God that are part of the ecclesia, the, the, the chosen, the gathering of God. Nowhere in Scripture did Jesus or Paul ever use the word local church. They always used the word ecclesia or the gathering. Yeah, so we've, we've missed it in places where I've made that discovery thrilled that I could have made make these wonderful discoveries and discover the great liberty that there is in being soulfully alive, fully free, fully alive, fully me, fully purposed in God. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's what I believe salvation should be. It should be a wonderful place, a <laughs> thrilling place, yeah, a live place. Fantastic, amazing. Eh? You know, um, it just comes to mind um, – Bill, that uh, the scripture says that God has not given us uh, a spirit of uh, of fear, but a, a spirit of love and power and a sound mind. And uh, of yes. course, that uh, spirit comes from the Holy Spirit, who is the one who breathed into us and by His Word speaks into our lives and reshapes our lives. We are not trans- we're not conformed to the pattern of the world, but we are transformed. Really? If you like, our our neurology has been uh, molded by the Word of God, transformed uh, into His image with every increasing glory. Bill, it's been amazing speaking to you today. Thank you so much for sharing your stories with us uh, and we pray that God will continue to use you mightily in your work. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Well, how amazing was it to talk to Dr. Bill Price today on The Reality, finding out a little bit more about our makeup, what makes us human, and how we live to serve God, and how we experience God in our daily lives. You know, the Bible says that God created us in His image. He created us to fellowship with Him. That is, to enter right relationship with Him and worship Him and pray. That's what fellowshipping with God is all about, worshipping God. 
God is spirit, and so he created us as spirit beings. Listen to what Jesus said to the woman at the well in John chapter 4, verses 23 to 24. But the hour is coming and has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such worshippers. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. When we worship God, we fellowship with him, and we worship him in spirit, for he has created us as spirit beings. The truth is, we are created as immortal beings. By that I mean we have an origin, we were created, we didn't exist before our creation, we're not eternal, and that God is the only eternal God, the only eternal being that ever exists, because he was and is and is to come. Yet I had an origin, I started somewhere when I was born, but nevertheless I am still immortal. But my immortality will not result in a glorious immortality, that is, a glorious life, an eternal life with God forever and ever, unless I know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I might spend the rest of eternity away from the presence of God. So how do I know the difference? Well, the Bible says all have sinned and come short of God's eternal glory. We've missed it because of sin in our lives. But it says if we confess us and he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And this is done because Jesus Christ took the wages of sin upon himself. The wages of sin is death and Jesus died. The wages of sin upon himself when he died on the cross. But Jesus rose up from the grave and that is how I know that he was sinless. Though he died for sin, Jesus was sinless. He came alive again by the power of God's Holy Spirit and his righteousness, thereby making a way for you and for me to enter into a right relationship with God and know the promise of eternal life, not a promise of eternal death. My immortal life is found in the way, the truth and the life who is Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Bill also said that Jesus is the aliveness of God. There's nothing more in this world that matters other than Jesus, seeking the fullness of Christ, only Jesus being sold out for Christ. I encourage you today to A, give your life to Jesus, surrender your life to God and say, Lord, I want your eternal life in my being, and B, to live it every day for Jesus, to be fixated with Christ. It's just Jesus. You've been listening to The Reality with me, Dudley Anderson. Thank you so much for your company. If you'd like to know more about what we've said, I'd love to hear from you, Dudley at surereality.net. Email me, Dudley at surereality.net. The Reality is produced by Sure Reality, a listener-supported radio ministry. Do consider partnering with us as a vision partner through the website surereality.net. Till next time, as always, keep your eyes on Jesus and God bless you.